Good morning, soldiers. Today we're fighting the good fight all across Europe as we learn to play the Company of Heroes board game. This is a World War II strategy game where one to six players fight for resources to deploy troops, purchase upgrades, and unleash powerful commander abilities. Here's the lead designer to take you through setup. There are a wide range of maps and scenarios available to you in the Company of Heroes board game. Set up the map according to your chosen scenario in the mission book. If you have Terrain Pack 1, place a flagpole miniature on the resource control points. For your starting games, the default scenarios have the resource points printed directly on the map for easier setup. Advanced scenarios have custom locations. Use the resource triangles to represent these. Players choose a faction to play. Each player then receives their faction's miniature tray, an HQ board, their three building boards, nine command points, and up to six infantry trays. The first building board is placed face up while building two and three are flipped over until they are constructed. Set the HQ board with the starting incomes and stockpiles identified in the mission book. By default, set the three resource incomes to one and stockpiles to four. Victory points start at zero. Each player begins with two infantry units from their first building. Infantry are designated by their green health symbols. To spawn a unit, place a figure in a unit tray for each point of health it has. For weapon teams, also place the corresponding weapon miniature, in this case a machine gun. Units can spawn anywhere in their spawn area as designated on the scenario map. Now you are ready to begin. A round in the Company of Heroes board game is divided into three phases. The maneuver phase, the damage phase, and the supply phase. The maneuver phase is divided into three turns, with each team alternating turns. On a team's turn, each player spends up to three command points, called CPs. CPs are spent to move units. To move a unit, place a CP in an adjacent X, then move the unit into that X. Each turn, players can spend CP on multiple units, or just one unit. Players can only spend three CP per turn. Remember that a round is a full sequence of maneuver, damage, and supply phases, while a turn happens during a maneuver phase and alternates between teams. A unit that moved on a previous turn can move again as long as it has not used its 3 CP maximum. In this example, the player still has 2 CP to spend this turn on other units, but cannot spend any more on this infantry squad as it's already spent its 3 personal CP for the round. Players cannot save or share CP. They must spend or forfeit 3 CP each turn. Units cannot move through water, enemy units, or through buildings. They can, however, move through allied units as long as they do not end their movement in the same hex as a unit. Regular infantry and machine gun teams can enter buildings to gain defenses, but they cannot leave the building on the same round they enter. Some vehicles have the transport ability. This allows regular infantry to move into the vehicle with normal movement. The unit then moves along with the vehicle for free without spending CP, but they cannot leave the vehicle during the same round that they enter. Some units have a speed die upgrade, which gives them a free move once per round. Flip the speed die over once the ability has been used. Once each player has spent or forfeited 9 CP total, the maneuver phase ends and the damage phase begins. There are four different damage types, anti-infantry, armor piercing, high explosive, and flame. Different unit types are resistant to different types of damage. A unit's range and damage are located on the unit's building board. Teams assign damage simultaneously. The type and amount of damage a unit assigns is located on their building board here. The US Rifleman does one AI damage or anti-infantry damage by default, so it places one AI die onto its target. The Greyhound does 2 AI damage, so it places 2 AI dice on its target. The 2-2 Armored Car does 1 AP and 1 AI damage, so it places both of those dice onto its target. Unless otherwise specified, a unit must place all its damage on a single target. Once all damage has been assigned, players go through each defending unit and roll any defense dice according to the defense matrix found on the back of each player's building board. In this example, the 222 armored car, which is a light vehicle, as indicated on its building board with a yellow heart, is resistant to anti-infantry damage and HE damage. Thus, he will roll all three anti-infantry dice that was assigned to him as defense rolls. And any green or black symbols is a successful block, and any red symbols 
cuts through and does one point of damage to the 2-2-2. Units you have a base sight of two hexes unless otherwise specified. In this example, the US Rifleman and the Soviet Su-85 cannot see each other because they are outside the default sight range of two. Units can spot for their allies that have longer range. In this example, the Soviet player moves a conscript squad into sight of the US Rifleman. The Su-85 can now see the Rifleman and because of its longer range, can now target them during the damage phase. Sight and attacks are blocked by buildings and smoke. To check whether an attack is blocked, draw an imaginary line from the center of the unit's hex to the center of the target's hex. If it fully intersects a line of a building, then attacks and sight are blocked. If the line just runs along the edge of a building or smoke hex, then it is not blocked. Using spotters, HE damage, which is indirect, can be fired over buildings and smoke. In this example, because the Soviet scout car is spotting the Greyhound for the mortars, they are able to assign their HE damage to the Greyhound during the damage phase. Regular infantry and machine gun squads can enter buildings to gain two defense dice. These are added to any other defense rolls they have. Some units are able to purchase a special defense upgrade. This will add a single defense die to all of their defenses. Flame damage is special because it cannot be defended against. In this example, the wounded infantry inside the building would receive three defense rolls, two from being in the building and one from their defense upgrade. However, in this situation, it doesn't matter because the flame damage cuts right through and the MG team only has one health left. Remove a squad member for each point of damage they take. For vehicles, place a damage cube in their hex. At the end of the damage phase, any unit that has lost all of its health is destroyed and removed from the board. When a unit is destroyed, the opposing team receives one victory point and increases their victory point stockpile by one on their HQ board. They do this for each additional enemy unit they destroy. Machine gun teams have the pin ability, which occurs at the beginning of the damage phase before any damage is assigned. They choose any legal infantry target who becomes marked with a pin die. A pinned unit cannot deal damage, capture control points, spend CP, move, or use abilities. Units remain pinned until the end of the round. While pinned, units can still spot for their allies, however. Units inside a building or a vehicle cannot be pinned. Machine gun teams themselves also cannot be pinned. Some units feature the camouflage ability. Units with this ability, such as the Soviet sniper, can only be spotted by adjacent units. While spotted, camouflage units can be targeted as normal. In this example, neither the Churchill nor the British infantry can target or assign damage to this sniper. But as long as one of these units was adjacent, the sniper is now spotted for all of the allies. Once all destroyed units have been removed from the board, the damage phase is over and the supply phase begins. During the supply phase, each team captures objectives, adjusts incomes, collects resources, and then spends resources. There are four resource types. Manpower, munitions, fuel, and victory points. These are represented on your HQ board as incomes, and stockpiles, with your incomes determining how fast your stockpiles will grow. A player gains resources by capturing control points, also known as objectives. If your team has an infantry unit, or any unit with the capture ability on a control point at the beginning of the supply phase, remove any existing flag and replace it with your own. Pinned units cannot capture. For each control point your team captures or loses, adjust your team's income amount by one accordingly. In this example, when the U.S. Rifleman captured a munitions point, his team would adjust their munitions income to two. After both teams have adjusted their incomes, each player increases their individual stockpiles by the corresponding income. In this example, this player would receive three more manpower, two more munitions, one more fuel, and one victory point. Each unit's purchase cost is located on their building board. For example, this U.S. Greyhound costs three manpower and two fuel. Subtract the amount from your stockpiles to spawn a new unit anywhere in your team's spawn area. Most units have two or more upgrade options located in the lower section of their unit tile on their building board and require either munitions or experience. Experience is covered in the advanced rules tutorial. Each unit may only purchase each upgrade once per unit and are tracked by placing the corresponding upgrade die in the unit's tray. In this example, 
the U.S. anti-tank gun purchases its defense upgrade for two munitions and then places a defense die in its unit tray to mark that it's been bought. Each player may spend their resources on unlocking their additional building boards by paying the amount listed on its back. In this example, the U.S. building board 2 requires one manpower and three fuel. Once purchased, the player may flip it over and immediately begin purchasing the new units it provides as well as their upgrades during that supply phase. Reinforcement points are locations on the map that fall within the team's spawn area that reinforce all adjacent friendly infantry squads during the supply phase. Reinforcement points are only active if they fall within the map spawn area as determined in the mission booklet. In this example, these two wounded Soviet infantry squads would heal one figure each up to their starting maximum. Some units like the Kubel Wagon have a reinforce ability, which heal all adjacent allied infantry as long as they are not in a building or in a vehicle. In this example, the Panzer Grenadiers would heal one during the supply phase, but the MG42 team would not because it's inside a building. Much like reinforce, some units have the repair ability. Most tier one infantry have the repair icon. These can repair one adjacent damaged vehicle or emplacement one health during supply phase. However, they cannot repair other units from inside a building or a vehicle. In this case, the British infantry section is adjacent to their emplacement and so they heal one damage at the end of the supply phase. Once both teams have finished their supply phases, check to see if either team has enough stockpiled victory points to win. The amount of victory points required are located in the mission book. At the end of the supply phase, teams determine turn order for the next round. The team with the fewest collected victory points in their stockpiles gets to choose to go first or last this round. Both have tactical advantages. If their victory point stockpiles are tied, then use income levels to determine who gets to choose turn order, starting with victory point incomes, then fuel, munitions, and finally manpower. If still tied, both teams roll three damage dice and the choice goes to the team with the most green symbols. Now you're ready for your first game of the Company of Heroes board game. Afterwards, you'll be able to bring in the final element of the basic rules, experience and commanders. These rules are found at the back of the basic rulebook and allow for further upgrades of your units as well as powerful commander abilities and vehicles. The commander card is selected at any time during the game and slotted into your HQ board. Thanks for watching the basic rules tutorial for the Company of Heroes board game. See the advanced rules tutorial when you're ready to take your game to the next level.